So Tim, uh, tell us how this thing started. So you and I were working together and we, uh, we had just uh, worked on the SVG1 and you said, hey, I really want to automate this short path and I want to make it easier for people to use. And a few things you wanted is the ability to see pressure points, not only at the condenser, but also at the pump. You know, mm -hmm. That way you can actually see that differential flow and really understand what's going on with your short path. And, and, uh, and that was the SVG3 and that, yeah, and that went pretty back. well. Remember you started using um, diffusion pumps. So yes. we added a sensor yeah, third so location. we could put that right on the diffusion pump so we could really do that high vacuum stuff when that was really sort of uh, the thing that people really wanted to do. Next, we said, okay, let's try to do some sort of control. Let's, let's make it so you know when we're boiling things off, let's nail that thing at two millibar mm -hmm. so we can get a lot of those volatiles off before it sucks, gets sucked in the pump. You know, the soja vac yeah. is a great pump, but even if we can keep it a little higher, we can make that last even longer. That didn't take off as well, but we'll talk about it. Yeah. The last thing we did, which was crazy, was this sweep valve thing. Yes. Remember that conversation? Yeah. You're like, hey, Tim, I'd really like to do this. Do you have something like that? I'm like, yeah, we've got something, and it works really well. Yep, it has to be just implemented into a more of a control factor for our application versus like a standalone box, because then you have to tie different boxes together and make them communicate. It's a little bit more complicated. So what was your idea in that whole sweep thing? Like, how did that come to you? So... I was doing some research and I found that in a petroleum distillation system, sometimes the column will subcool in process just because of how molecules are moving through it. And s during certain processes, they would send in hot steam and they'd flush the system with steam in between the process, which would keep the system warm and also move the volatile molecules uh, over to their desired location. So what we did was we first started uh, experimenting with the shore path, we would run it and then we'd hook up a little hose and then blow smoke into it. And we would notice <laughs> that when you did that, you could actually see smoke going through it. So the concept was the surface tension where the molecules come off normally requires, say, X temperature and X pressure. And if we were to sweep the surface of those molecules, the, for instance, um, the fractions you're distilling, they don't want to go downwards. They're going to want to rush out of the system. And it literally is like displacing the molecules. So if your flask was distilling and you had a bunch of uh, fractions that were displaced floating around there waiting to creep up and come out of the system, you're now displacing it with an inert gas and you're sweeping those molecules out. And it's almost like turbocharging. It was very useful. In fact, most of the customers who buy it live by it. One of the really cool outcomes of that is we learned in the Sojvax operation, if you sweep heavily, you will be able to remove all of the volatile compounds or your terps in your head section immediately. And at the same time, it displaces the, it supersaturates the oil with that displaced vapor. And so it dries your pumps out while you're operating. Another really cool feature mm. is if you were drying your pumps out and the system shut down, you can move the sweep valve over to your Edwards and dry the oil out much faster because it displaces it. It supersaturates it with the inert gas and everything else wants to jump out of it. So it has multiple multiple features, we found the best use was in the head section. In the head section, if, you, if a normal short path was an example, getting rid of the heads in an hour, hour and a half, it shortened it down to 15 to 30 minutes. Mm. And it also cleared the system much quicker because all those molecules, you know, in the short path, you have the head, the laminar path, and the trap, everything kind of gets trapped or trickles through. But if you have a movement coming all the way through the system continually, it just moves all those molecules down to the trap and it keeps everything clean. So we had cleaner sensors, cleaner short paths, and faster operation. Yeah, that was, that was amazing. And I remember that was, I think it was a Sunday conversation. You're like, I really like this. And we had developed this product specifically for freeze dryer control. Mm -hmm. So remember the first thing I yeah. gave you was this pressure control, like yep. dial in one tour and it would bleed in air to maintain one tour. We that started, was the first setting, yeah. That was yeah. the first one. And, the and, PID setting. And that, that was, for a customer, it was a little bit too hard yeah. to manage. Yeah. So then we went to this other thing where we just flow a specific amount of flow, this SECMs. And that was a lot easier to control. So that was brilliant. While this does both, mm -hmm. that's what it seemed like people really yes. wanted to do. Very, very much so because the first setting, you could go into the control system and just set how much you want to bleed. So if I wanted to set this and see, let's say 300 microns on the screen and I want to bleed 200 microns, you could set that to that range and actually watch it sit and slowly dispense the vapors.